Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Pastor Armando. Super pumped and excited to be here with you today. Uh, before we jump into part five of our message series, Battle Ready, Developing the Faith of a Warrior, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about our impact ministry. If you're new to Fusion Church, our impact campaign is really uh, a ministry of Fusion Church where every single month um, we give toward organizations globally that really have the heart of Jesus. They stand against things such as homelessness, poverty, uh, bringing an end to human trafficking, and a portion of your tithes and your offerings every single month go toward these organizations globally. So you guys are having a global impact through your generosity in serving Jesus every month. However, locally, we also do an impact. Locally, uh, our local campaigns are around similar uh, types of uh, issues uh, that are near and dear to Jesus's heart. Uh, and this coming month, our monthly impact campaign is gonna be partnering with an organization called uh, River Haven uh, TLC, which is a transitional living community uh, for children that are in foster care that are between one home and another. Uh, and these are kids that, um, man, they were asking for, uh, for a church to come by and to uh, maybe do a barbecue with them or a cookout. And they reached out to us and we certainly said yes, because we know you are some of the most generous people uh, on the face of the earth. And what it entails really is us going there. So if you're online or in person, uh, local, and you want to come out and help, all you got to do is go to our website or our app, uh, and you're going to go to our impact tab. Hit our impact tab, sign yourself up so we know, where you, so we know you're coming. It will also detail uh, for you how else else you can support, whether it's a potluck dish or uh, maybe you want to buy something uh, for some of these kids. There's about 10 of these children uh, from 10 years old to 17 um, that we're going to be having a cookout barbecue with. And really what you just need to do is just bring yourself a chair, some fun and faith, and we're just going to hang out with these kids and love on them just as Jesus would. So make sure you guys sign up for that. It's going to be an awesome uh, July impact campaign. Right now, I believe it's set out for July 9th, um, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be a great time. So make sure you guys sign up for that. And we're going to make a difference here in our community in the lives of real children uh, in Jesus's name. So uh, I don't know if you can't get excited about that, then you don't have a pulse. So let's, let's be excited about that. Amen. Uh, if you can't make it, a great way to support us is to still kind of sign yourself up. And what you can do is still, you can donate uh, to this housing facility, uh, this temporary housing um, to be able to help these kids that are desperately in need. So show up, let's love them. If you can't pray, and give, right? That's a great way to support them, right? And all of your giving uh, in this impact will go directly to these children. Um, so anyway, as we um, prepare our hearts for this message today, we're gonna dive back into part five of our message series uh, entitled Battle Ready, Faith of a Warrior. And this message series is really focused on learning some Old Testament Bible stories and <clears throat> what God did in the lives of these biblical figures and how uh, what God did in their lives applies to you and I today. And this message series has been completely, completely life changing. For today, we're actually gonna focus in on something you and I have struggled with in our lives. Everyone has struggled with this. And it's with the reality that so many of us are bogged down by life's regrets. You ever regret anything? Like just take a moment and think about that. Do I regret anything in my life? Do I regret something I said? Do I regret something I did? Do I regret a relationship or a, a decision I made that has hurt me in my life? Like, do I have regrets? So many of us, uh, one of the greatest regrets is not taking chances, not taking risks. So many of us regret never taking a step forward into a door or an opportunity. There's this guy, uh, a poet named Horace, right? He's a, a poet from long ago. Check out his uh, picture here. Um, and he coined the phrase carpe deum, right? Which means seize the day or take hold of the day. And really the whole thought behind this, the premise behind this is that everyone should enjoy their life if they can. Uh, for us, we understand that God wants us to make the most out of every opportunity. And what we're going to see here is a biblical figure, a warrior woman by the name of Deborah. That's right, a warrior woman by the name of Deborah. And not only men were warriors in the Bible. We have a number of women who took steps forward in faith and were completely warriors. And this one is going to be so encouraging to you ladies out there and us guys. There's something we can learn from the life of Deborah, no doubt about it, because she was a no nonsense kind of woman. She was a, a, a woman who uh, really seized the day. She seized the moment. She saw opportunities. And rather than taking a step back in fear, she took a step forward 
in faith and she didn't waste the opportunities. Remember again what Ephesians 5, 16 says. It says, make the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Well, how does that apply to you and I today? It means if God opens a door before you, if there's an opportunity to do good, if there's an opportunity to minister the word, if there's an opportunity to make a difference, right? Fusion Impact Campaign, right? If there's an opportunity for God to use you, take it because this world desperately needs it. One of the greatest guilts you and I will ever face in this life is not taking the opportunities that God has placed before us. Look, in my years of uh, counseling and in pastoring, man, I, I've, sat, I've sat alongside the deathbed of people preparing uh, for their transition, right? And uh, man, there's some commonality, right? At the end of people's lives, there's a few things that they, that they often say. They say, I wish I would have had the courage to be true to myself, right? A lot of people will say that, I wish I would have done that. Some people say, I wish I wouldn't have worked so hard. I wish I would have spent more time uh, with my family, building memories, um, bucket list, right? That kind of stuff. Others say, hey, I wish I would have expressed my feelings more wish I would have stayed in touch with friends. Uh, some say, I wish I would have allowed myself to be happier. Some of you sitting here today, as you're hearing this, you're like, man, I, I wish that I, would have, uh, that I would teach my kids more things. I wish I would get off my cell phone a little more and make a little more time for this, right? Some of us are like, I, I, I wish I wouldn't have sat with unforgiveness, bitterness, and resentment as long as I have in my life. Some of us are like, hey, I wish I would have stood up to that bully when I was in school, right? Because that, that's impacted me so greatly in my life. Some of us just sit back and we're like, hey, I, I wish I would have taken the opportunities that God has placed before me. Guys, you don't have to live with regret anymore. You see, living in Christ, living in Jesus, means you get to live a life of freedom. If you're here today and you're like, pastor, I don't know what I believe about God. I don't, but I'm in this message and I gotta tell you, if that's you, God has something for you today. God wants to speak directly to you and he wants to work something deep through you because in Christ, there's redemption. Man, early in my walk you know, with the Lord, I was probably mid-20s. I was married, had a couple kids and um, they were young. I still have kids, thank God. <laughs> They're all older now. But when they were younger, I remember uh, feeling um, kind of, uh, man, I was struggling with a little bit of guilt. I was struggling with guilt because I think my wife and I had some sort of argument uh, and I was sitting on a train going to, uh, going to school. Um, I was in grad school at the time. And um, I remember the Lord speak to me and he said, Armando, you're either going to be a blessing to your family or you're going to be a curse. You choose. And then in that moment, I made a decision. I said, God, going forward in my life, I want to live a life of no regrets. I want to live a life of no regrets. I want to say what needs to be said. I want to do what needs to be done. I want to take advantage of every opportunity. And you know what? That radically changed my life. Certainly, I don't live that perfectly, but I got to tell you, there's times where I'm confronted by fear, fear to step forward, fear to apologize in an argument, fear to be the one to humble oneself. And then I think, life of no regrets. When I, wanna, when I put my head on my pillow at the end of the night, I want to know that I lived life to its fullest that day. So that drives me to be humble, to be kind, to take opportunities. And I got to tell you, I never regret taking a step toward living a life of no regrets. I only ever regret the moments that I sat frozen. But I got to tell you, no one ever lives life perfectly, right? So let's fast forward. That, you know, uh, I, I live by that today, live a life of no regrets. But there was a time where my grandfather had gotten sick some years ago. And my wife was saying, you know, this could be the end. You should go visit him. And I said, yeah, 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 I will. I'm too busy. So I didn't go. And then she said, Armando, I, I think this is the end. You ought, to go, you ought to go visit your grandfather. There's some things you probably need to say. And I said, yeah, 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 but uh, I got a lot going on right now. Excuse after excuse. Well, really, what was I doing? I was compelled by fear. Fear of facing discomfort. Fear of facing pain. Uh, my grandfather was so important to me. He was like my best friend growing up. I mean, he had so much influence in my life. I couldn't see him in the weakened state he was in. I made it all about me, right? What would have been best for grandpa would be to see me. He wanted to see me. He asked to see me. But I was so uh, filled with anxiety, fear, grief, sadness, hurt, pain. I, I couldn't bring myself or didn't bring myself to make the hard decision. And how many of you know my wife was right? Grandpa passed. And when grandpa passed, I was filled with so much remorse, so much guilt. I felt horrible. And I said, you know, I wish I could have hugged him one last time, not just when he's in his casket. And, and some of you are sitting there thinking, 
man, I can relate to that. I, I, I've missed opportunities. I, I wish I would have said this at the deathbed of my loved one. I wish I could have done this or that differently, right? Like you're sitting there thinking the same thing. But I got to tell you, the question is like, what do we do with that now? How do you find closure? You know, for me, I struggled with that for some time. But I thank God, and this is really important for you if you're spiritually seeking, because Jesus promises redemption, not just of your soul, but he promises redemption of your situation over your mistake. You see, when we come to Jesus and we say, God, would you forgive me of my sins? He forgives you fully and completely. You never need to wear shame, guilt again, whatever it is you did last night, last week, that, that you're carrying last month, a year ago, some point in your life, whatever it is that you're carrying, God will take that away from you and it, as if you had never done it. And you know what? But what about mistakes, right? There's earthly consequences. I stand on the promise of God, right? That Jesus, I may not have been able to find, uh, to be able to see my grandfather, right? I chose not to. And that is something I, I may regret, but God, would you make it right? And Jesus gives grace, which is unmerited favor of God, that when you're in Christ, when you've turned away from sin and you've turned toward God, which is a decision we all have to make, that he gives you grace, which means he covers up all your mistakes. He covers them completely. And scripture says no weapons formed against us will prosper. All things work together for good for those who love the Lord. So how did that work together for good? I no longer feel guilt and shame anymore because I believe God redeemed it. And he used it because he changed my perspective. Every time I'm confronted with a decision or an opportunity, I have to ask myself, do I want to live a life of no regrets? And I lean back on that story with my grandfather that I no longer feel bad about because I gave it to Jesus and now it's in God's hands. I no longer feel bad about that, but that is almost like the energy or the fuel that says, oh, I don't wanna make that decision again, right? So, so if you're sitting there with guilt and shame, I wanna encourage you right now as an act of faith, all you need to do is say, God, I give this to you, God. Man, if you're sitting there and you've committed adultery, God, I give this to you. You've cheated. You've done something wrong in a dating relationship. God, I give this to you. You may have to confess to the people you've hurt, but God, I give this to you because it's his battle to fight. Maybe you've lied. Maybe you've stolen. Maybe you've, uh, man, maybe you've lied. You know, you, you've done something wrong in a relationship. Like, God, I give this to you. Maybe there was an opportunity, right, in your career and you were gonna be advanced and you were like, no, I'm too afraid to step into that opportunity or in ministry. I'm too afraid to step forward. God, I give that to you. You know, I thank God because I, you know, we serve a God that not only promises that he will make right what we did wrong, but he also promises that your calling is irrevocable. So whatever it is that God has created you for, no matter how many times you've said no to God, God, I'm not gonna walk forward. God, I'm not, I'm not gonna take this step of faith. God, I'm not gonna do this. Why? Because I'm afraid. God, I'm nervous. God, I, I don't know how it's gonna turn out. My faith isn't strong enough, right? So God's not mad at you. God is incredibly patient toward you. And what he says to you in scripture, is that your calling is irrevocable. No matter how many times you say no to me, no matter how many times you walk away from me, the moment your heart shifts and you say yes, I give it right back to you. Now, you may have taken detours in your life, right? We all take detours. You may have taken detours, but God reestablishes you right back where you need to be, right? Because he's faithful. He's faithful. So, I got to tell you, going back to the story of Deborah, right? Who's Deborah, right? This amazing warrior woman in scripture. Uh, Deborah is one of the only female judges in the book of Judges. Now, this is a time in history after Joshua uh, in the Old Testament where uh, they didn't have kings yet and God would place judges before them, some of which were, which were also prophets, right? So uh, Deborah was both a prophet and a judge and they would stand or preside over Israel on behalf of God. And they would minister to the people. They would uh, work out to disputes amongst the people. They were judges, right? They would, um, they would grab people that were in arguments and fights and they would work it out for Israel. And their job was to really uh, keep Israel accountable, keep Israel serving God. And uh, how many of you know, Israel didn't always pay attention and listen. And um, so Deborah was a strong woman of courage, a strong woman of faith. She's one of the few women uh, that, that were so influential um, in the Old Testament. Right? There's a time in history where she shouldn't have she should not have filled this position. There's a time in history where this was a male-dominated, completely male-dominated society, and, and women generally didn't hold roles like this. But how many of you know that God makes no distinction between male and female? He doesn't. Uh, male and female, God's uh, image is in both. Um, God has called both, anointed both. God has gifted both with gifts of the Holy Spirit and called both to ministry, right? And this is what we see in Deborah's story, this woman of influence, this 
prophetess, this priestess, right? Woman of courage. And we're going to jump into Judges 4, uh, verse 1. Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. So the Lord sold them into the hands of Jabin, king of Canaan, who... uh, who reigned in Hazor. Sisera, the commander of his army, uh, was based in uh, Harasheth, uh, Hagamim, because he had 900 chariots fitted with iron and cruelly oppressed the Israelites for 20 years. They cried to the Lord for help. Now, before we go on to Deborah here, you see, this is, this is the cycle of sin that was in Israel, right? When Israel placed God first in their lives, when Israel walked through the door of obedience, God blessed them. But when Israel cursed God, when Israel turned their heart on God, how many of you know there are consequences to our mistakes? There are. And here's an important life lesson, that much of the suffering you and I face in life, it's due to our own decisions. It really is. It's due to uh, the doors that you and I have opened, but God is faithful. And when we turn away from those things and we turn toward God, God sends an answer. He sends a redemptive savior, Jesus, right? This whole book of Judges, this book of Deborah, uh, the story of Deborah uh, that we see in Judges chapter four and five is really a foreshadowing of what we will eventually see in Jesus Christ, right? Or what we see in the New Testament, right? So it's this amazing foreshadowing of God's faithfulness. When you sin, there's consequences that we bring into our own lives. And when you turn to God, there's complete forgiveness and complete restoration. So for 20 years, Israel was under the penalty of their own choices, just like many of us face today, right? Consequences of our own choices. And when you turn to God, he sends an answer. And in this case, he sends Deborah. Now, Deborah, a prophet, uh, the wife of uh, Lapidoth, uh, was leading Israel at that time. She held court under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites went up uh, to her to have their disputes decided. So this woman sat between two towns, right? She sat... um, Uh, in the middle of Ramah, which meant uh, hill or height, and Bethel, which is basically the house of God. And what's really interesting about Deborah is she sat under this palm, right? And this is where she was. She positioned herself strategically to be available to anybody, right? Other judges that we see in the book of Judges would position themselves in towns or cities, and people kind of had to go to them. She literally positioned herself in the heartbeat, the trading route between two cities. What also really stands out for Deborah is really her faithfulness, right? So you have, you have, Rama, which means hill or height, right? So this could represent for us this uh, self-elevation. And then we have the house of God, this place where she could have ran to for safety. But she literally pushed against self-promotion. She didn't position herself in the town to be seen by everybody. She positioned herself humbly under a palm tree, uh, positioned herself for people. And she didn't retreat back into safety, right? She could have uh, stayed in Bethel in complete isolation, but she positioned herself kind of in between the both. And this is, the, this is a life lesson for us. So many of us run to self-preservation or we run toward self-elevation. And what Deborah's like, man, I'm not gonna self-preserve and I'm not gonna self-elevate. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk by faith, not by sight. I know what I'm called to do. And, she, and this is a life lesson for you and I to excel at where God called you. So many of us, we get so frustrated in our position, right? Whatever that job is, whatever that calling is. And we're like, when will I be elevated? You know, sometimes God doesn't elevate us because we haven't suffered in the position we're in. When I say suffering, I don't mean that in a bad context. What I mean is that when you show long suffering, when you show faithfulness, when you show loyalty, when you're a good steward with what God gave you, eventually doors open. So many of us shortcut faith and we try to shortcut life lessons that you need to grow in your relationship with the Lord because we try to, uh, we try to self-elevate, we try to excel ourselves faster, get up out of a position. And what God's really calling so many of us to is stay where you're at. Stay where you're planted. Show yourself to be faithful. Be a good steward with what God gave you. And in due time, God's gonna give you more. And that's really where Deborah was at. Let's jump into verse six. So she sent for Barak, son of Abinam, from Kadesh in Naphtali, and said to him, the Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, go take, uh, go take with you 10,000 men of Naphtali and Zebulun and lead them to Mount Tabor. I will lead Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his troops to the Kishon River and give him into, the, into your hands. Barak said to her, if you go with me, I will go. But if you don't go with me, I, I won't go. Like, let's stop here for a moment. 
Barak was overcome. So he's a commander of an army in Israel, right? Completely, completely overwhelmed with fear. How many of you recognize that what's often holding you back from releasing anger, resentment, unforgiveness, what's holding you back from taking that step in your career, it's fear and anxiety. Literally fear, overwhelming fear is the enemy's number one tool in your life to rob you of everything God has positioned for you. You see, the enemy can't rob God and the enemy really can't rob you unless we give him a foothold in our mind and we start responding to fear with no faith, which means I give into it. I obsess over it. I allow it to have power in my life. And that's exactly where Barak was. Barak was overcome by fear. And rather than positioning his faith in God and saying, hey, I'm gonna walk forward, do what uh, this, th- th- this priestess, this prophetess Deborah told me to do. Uh, man, I'm not gonna move. I'm gonna put my faith in Deborah, right? And Deborah, she's faced with the same decision. This is what she says. Certainly I will go with you, said Deborah. But because of the course you are taking, the absence of faith, the dependence on me instead of God. So many of us put our dependence on people and things and comforts instead of God. The honor will not be yours for the Lord will de- deliver Sisera into the hands of a woman. So Deborah went uh, with Barak to Kadesh where Barak summoned Zebulun and Nephtali. The 10,000 men went up under his command and Deborah also went with him. You see both Deborah, both Deborah and Barak were faced with the same fears the same anxieties, the threat of war, the threat of annihilation. And one was like, I'm not moving unless you come with me. And the other's like, I'm moving because God's with me. You see, this is where faith is tested. Faith is always tested when you and I have a decision to make. And the decision is made evident every time you and I are overwhelmed by fear, fear of taking a step forward in your life. Look, I know God is speaking to you today. I know he is. And God is asking some of you to remove unforgiveness in your life. God is asking some of you to live in obedience toward him. God is asking some of you to be honest about things you've been hiding in your life so that you can be set free. And like Deborah, you got to take a step of faith, right? You know, this is so encouraging. If you're sitting out there like as a woman, right? And maybe you're not married, but you're, 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 you have a family, you, you got kids. Like what an encouraging story of strength of a woman. Look, if you're a single mom, Deborah's story is completely for you. If you're carrying the spiritual weight of your family, you're a warrior woman as well. If you're a survivor of abuse, you're a warrior woman. You've kicked that addiction. You've walked through recovery. You've survived a deep pain. You've been to hell and back. You are a Deborah. You are completely a Deborah and need to be encouraged because you're smarter than you think you are. You're more capable than you think you are. You see, Deborah, though she is married, most scholars believe, she did not need a man to lead her to be obedient to God. She didn't need a man to lead her to to know God. You see, you, you don't need a man in your life to make you strong. You are strong. You don't need a man in your life to make you smarter. You are smart. You got exactly what God has called you uh, to have. You are fully and completely able to be who you are always meant to be. And even if you're not in a relationship, look, wanting a relationship for companionship, that's good. That's healthy. If you want that, pray for that. But understand, you don't need a man to do in you and through you what you want. You need God. And that's where, that's where Deborah was. And this isn't just for women. Look, I remember when I got saved. I was the only saved person in my household, but scripture has a promise that your family will be sanctified through your faith. So you know what? I was ridiculed by my aunts. I was by my dad's side of the family. I was ignored by some on my mother's side of the family. My parents are like, what are you doing? You part of a cult? And I was like, I'm not part of a cult. I just love Jesus. And you know what? It wasn't long before my mother gave her life to Jesus. It wasn't long before my sisters followed. It wasn't long maybe a couple of years, my dad, who was an atheist all my life, gave his life to Jesus. Look, if you are carrying the weight, if you're carrying the weight of faith, if you're carrying the weight of responsibility of stepping forward in your family, you are a Deborah. Whether you're a woman who's, who, who doesn't, who, who's not married, you don't have a guy in your life, and you got to take steps forward, you're a Deborah. Maybe you're a teenager, Maybe you're a kid who's got faith in Jesus and you're the only one in your family. Man, you got the heart of Deborah. You got the heart of Deborah. And, And you know what? What Deborah did well is she had the willingness to act. 
She had the willingness to move forward in her life. You see, faith isn't the absence of fear. It's your response to it. And so many of us today, you, you got to recognize there's a battle to be fought in front of you. For some of you like me, in my early walk, it was, it was my family. It was believing God, my family would get saved. And I was the spiritual head of my home. Maybe, maybe you are married and your husband doesn't know Jesus, but you do. You have the weight of being the spiritual head in your home. You gotta walk forward in faith. You see, Deborah had the willingness to act when the need was there, Barak didn't. Barak did not, right? So let's keep going on, right? So as they were faced in battle now, Judges uh, verse eight, uh, chapter four, Barak said to her, uh, we're gonna go back over that. If you go with me, I will go. But if you don't go with me, I won't go. Let's just talk about misguided trust. Because some of us are like that, right? Like, oh, I'll do anything as long as I got a wingman, as long as I have a friend. It's misguided trust. Are you willing to walk forward in your life when it's just you and God? You see, we never, we never really grow in our faith until we're stripped of everyone and everything else, emotionally, depending on them. And then we recognize, God, it's just me and you. God, it was always just me and you. I'm willing to walk forward in faith. And what you gotta recognize is how you, again, respond to that fear. It's the difference of whether you're gonna thrive in faith or you're gonna die in faith, right? Deborah took steps forward. She had the willingness to act, right? Fear can overcome us and steal so much. But how do you know that you are controlled by fear? You play it safe. You don't take faith risks. You don't. You, you're just like, no, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to walk away. You excuse behavior, uh, uh, your behavior, your choices, and take the approach of, oh, I'll just kind of wait and see how things go. And that's like, oh, God, I'll follow you. As long as I know the outcome's going to be okay. God, I'll follow you. As long as you know, I get some guarantees. God, I'll follow you as long as it doesn't hurt that much. Because that's not faith, it's, it's conditions. It's conditions and some of us rationalize our fears, right? That's, that's not walking by, by faith. If, if we've said yes to any of those, we, we're actually living by fear and not by faith. And that's what separated Deborah and her courageous tenacity, right, that she had from everyone else. There wasn't a man in all of Israel who would step forward with the willingness to act when it was required, except for Deborah. This woman had a warrior's type faith. And if you want a battle ready faith, the faith of a warrior, it starts with the willingness to take a step forward, the willingness to act. It, it, it takes the, um, a decision to not promote oneself, self uh, gratification, or to run toward complete safety. It, it means staying in the journey, trusting God as you walk forward. Right, that's what it takes to have the faith of a warrior. What does your faith tell you about what it is you're facing? You know what? When I was facing some health issues years ago, you know what my faith told me? That no matter what it is that's going on in my life, man, I'm gonna get through this, right? I'm gonna get through this emotionally, that I'm gonna survive this, right? I had this horrible skin condition, right? Like God is still good even though my situation wasn't. Man, God protects me even though right now I feel like I'm in a season where I'm not feeling very protected, right? What is your faith telling you about your situation? You see, and some of us right now are hearing the voice of the enemy in the background. You can't, you won't, you're not gonna get through this. You're never gonna survive this. So many of us are hearing that voice. You gotta be able to push against that voice. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I don't receive what you're telling me right now. I'm gonna... I'm gonna renew my thoughts with the truth of the word. Scripture says, take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. Like my thoughts are gonna emulate scripture. My thoughts are gonna follow his word. I'm not going to, I'm not gonna self, self batter myself. So many of you today sit in a place of complete self batter and you think that you're not enough, that God, like your faith isn't strong enough. Scripture says you only need the faith of a, Mustard seed, what does that mean? It means just trusting God. Look, I don't know how it's gonna turn out. I don't know what the future holds, but what I do know is I'm gonna walk forward with you, God. I'm gonna walk forward trusting you, God. And you know what, God, I want that thick-headed approach like, like Deborah. Look, when I was a kid, I was told I was thick-headed all the time. I was a stubborn little bugger. But you know what, Deborah was stubborn in faith. Like, hey, I might be facing unimaginable odds, but God. God is with me. God is for me. You might be facing that diagnosis, but God is bigger than my sickness. You might be facing that hardship, but you know what? God, God, he's gonna, he's gonna get me through this. 
He's going to get me through this. And you know what? Deborah was an amazing corner man, corner man, corner woman for Barack. How many of you know what a corner man or woman is? Corner man is that person who sits in your life and they speak truth and they speak life into you. Let me show you what I mean. Judges 4 uh, verse 12. When they said to Sisera that Barak, son of Abinam, had gone up to Mount Tabor, Sisera summoned uh, from uh, Harasheth and Hagamim uh, to the Kishon River all his men and 900 chariots fitted with iron. Then Deborah said to Barak, go, say go. This is the day the Lord has given Sisera into your hands. Has not the Lord gone ahead of you? What an amazing pep talk. Look, Barak, right now you're filled with fear, right? He's sitting here looking at an unimaginable force before him. There's no way. I can't. We won't make it. We're not going to triumph. They outnumber us. Do you see those chariots? Like, that's intimidating. And she's like, stop the voice of the enemy. Stop the voice of negativity. Barak, are you not a child of God? Does God not go before you? Now, stop thinking and go. Do you know so many of us curse our own faith because we think too much? Stop thinking and go. That's what she's saying. Stop thinking so much and go. So many of us we, we, we lose the battle before we even enter the game, right? Like, because we sit on the sidelines thinking about getting into it, talking ourselves out of it. We never actually get in the game and we watch life just happen in front of us. And Deborah's like, no, stop thinking and just go. And go believing God, for does not the Lord go ahead of you? The power of a pep talk power of a pep talk. I want to show you uh, the power of a pep talk in this awesome clip from uh, the movie Rocky. Rocky is fighting this unimaginable foe. And if it weren't for his corner men, might have been a different outcome. Check this out. Wasn't that an awesome clip from Rocky? One of my favorite uh, uh, clips of all time. And I got to tell you, it's my favorite because I feel inspired when I watch it. I do. And now this is just a movie, right? But the reality is you have two types of people in your life. You have people in your life who feed off of your fear and they don't want to see you advance because they're hurting inside themselves and they project all their pain and wounds on you and they are intimidated by your success. They're not speaking life into you. They want to suck life out of you. And then you have people in your life that, man, they want to confront you to bring you to new heights, right? They're like, no, don't get comfortable. You're going to grow. No, don't get comfortable. You're greater than what you're settling for. So you got people that suck the life out of you and you got people that pour the life into you. What you need is powerful corner men. We learned this. What you need in your life is not just to be a Deborah. You have to surround yourself with Deborahs in your life because without that, we allow the voice of the enemy to speak in. What is the voice of the enemy? It's not that people are the enemy. Our brokenness is due to sin, right? The enemy may speak through and use people in your life to feed negativity and they don't even realize it. What's the voice of the enemy? Anything that is contrary to the word of God is the voice of the enemy. And so many of us, we settle for that. We settle for that on our social media. We settle for that in our phone call conversations and our texting. Why are we allowing cancer in? We need to be pushing it out. Be a Deborah, surround yourself with Deborahs and you will have a battle ready warrior like faith. So Barak went down to uh, uh, Mount Tabor, Tabor with 10,000 men following him. At Barak's advance, the Lord routed Sisera and all his chariots and the army by sword. And Sisera got down from his chariot, fled on foot. Barak pushed the chariots and the army as far as uh, Harasheth, Hagamim, and all of Sisera's troops fell by the sword. Not a man was left. You see, you can't conquer the fear that you allowed to overcome you in your life. You, you can't, you can only move forward by deciding to have a warrior's like faith and saying, I will live a life of no regrets. What is it that the Holy Spirit is asking you to face today? 
Is it, I need to face forgiveness and I need to forgive, I need to grant for forgiveness. Maybe you need to ask for forgiveness. Maybe it's honesty, right? Maybe it's, maybe it's that thing that, that's going on in the, in the back of your life, the curtain in your life. Everybody sees the face and the persona and the masks we wear, but only God sees what's going on behind you. And what you gotta recognize is what you bury doesn't die. It just chases you. It follows you your whole life. And it'd be creeping on you, right? Doesn't it? Like, did you ever feel fear and dwell on it? Did you ever have a thought of guilt and shame and dwell on it? We, we all do. We're overcome often by those things. And we think about it. And it's so deceptive because when we have a fear, we don't realize we're thinking on it, but we dwell on it. And what we dwell on, we actually rehearse over and over and over in our lives. And that thing we fear, right? That thing we fear to face, we've rehearsed it so many times with bad outcomes. We never actually get into the game because we've already determined it's going to, it's going to fail. It's going to go wrong. It's not going to go the way I want. When in reality, that's the extreme opposite of faith. You see, what you obsess on, what you rehearse, what you dwell on has power in your life. P- thoughts have power. All thoughts have power. Nothing in your life has happened without it being a thought first. You see, thoughts birth actions. This cell phone, this wasn't available 25 years ago, right? It started with a thought of creativity, right? The printing press that prints our Bibles, right? Hundreds of years ago, started with a thought of creativity. That action you did, that thing you did that you're proud of, started with a thought first, a conviction maybe. That thing we did we're not so proud of, started with a thought. You getting married, you being in a relationship, you coming to church today, you listening in online podcast, YouTube, like it all started with a thought. Thoughts have power in your life and you're either gonna bless yourself with the thoughts you have and the thoughts you reinforce and and dwell on or you're going to curse yourself. You see, in order to live a life of no regrets, that decision has to be a commitment in your thoughts first. It has to be a commitment in your thoughts first. Look, this end of the story, not a man was left, right? Barak and Deborah move forward and Sisera finds himself in a tent with a woman and the woman took his life. She, she killed this commander, fulfilling the prophetess's statement, right? So, so they, they experienced victory. They had victory because Deborah decided to take a step forward in faith. So many of us waste so much time. As we wrap up this message today, understand we waste so much time, so much opportunity, and we're all given about the same amount of time. Look, there's a 1,440 minutes in a day. There's 168 hours in a week. Most of us, most of us will live 70, 80, maybe 90 years. Guys, it's a limited time. Don't waste it. Like for me, you know, you know what statement I have to make? God, I wanna live every moment for you. I want to live for you in my marriage. I want to live for you in the way I treat my kids. I want to live for you in my finances. God, I want to live for you in ministry. I want to live for you uh, when I'm in the, uh, my secular workplace, right? Like God, I want to live for you in all these areas. I don't want time to run out on me and think, oh, I should have forgave this person. I had to live with that. Oh, I should have asked for forgiveness. I got to live with that. Like I want to live a life with no regrets. And if that's you and you're like, you know what? I don't wanna, I don't wanna do this anymore. I wanna have a Deborah-like faith. I want the power to press forward. I, I, I wanna be able to surround myself with good corner men, right? I want the willingness to act. It means you need to make a faith commitment right now between you and God. God, I wanna live a life of no regrets. And that's how you develop a warrior-like faith, a battle-ready-like faith because the battle, it's already here. You're in this battle called life in this journey and how you live it and how it turns out Guys, it's totally dependent on every decision you make. The decisions you make today will echo into the future, a year, two, three, four, five years down the road. Where you're at today is the culmination of every decision you've made up to this point in your life. Where will you be tomorrow? You know, for me, where will I be? I make a decision today to serve the Lord, to live a life of repentance. To, to, and it's not easy. It's only made possible through the power of the Holy Spirit, right? So that's true for you and I. But it starts for you with saying, Jesus, I give you my heart. Jesus, I give you my life. I surrender all. When you live that way, you'll be surprised in what God does with your life. Let me encourage you this morning, live a life of no regrets. 
Stop taking life for granted. Uh, you're, you're not guaranteed tomorrow. You're not guaranteed time with friends and family. You're not guaranteed anything except the love of God in your life and the promise of redemption when you turn to him. So what that means for me is I have to be obedient to scripture. Scripture says that the times are evil make the most of every opportunity. Guys, let me encourage you this week. I, I, I challenge you, make the most of every opportunity with your friends and family. Make the most with every opportunity you have in your workplace. Make the most of what God has given you this week. And by the end of this week, you will have a week of absolutely no regrets. Sign up for our impact ministry uh, on our website or our app. Make a difference in the lives of, of these 10 or so children that are in transition between one home to another. They need your love and attention. Would you give that to them with our church? Let me pray for you this morning. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for you are good. You are gracious. You are kind. Lord God, may we have a warrior-like faith where we leave it all out on the field, God, where we hold nothing back and we move forward trusting you, Lord. Lord God, I pray you would uh, inspire us, challenge us, Lord God, and give us the desire, Lord Jesus, to uh, live a life of no regrets. Lord God, we place our faith and our trust in you. Your name, Christ Jesus, amen. Amen and amen. Guys, join us next week uh, for the sixth part of this message series, uh, Battle Ready, Developing the Faith of a Warrior. Make sure you invite a friend. God bless you guys. Hey, what's up? My name is Armando. I'm the pastor of Fusion Church, and we are so excited that you followed along in this message. We hope that you enjoyed this message. If you did, make sure that you hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you feel led by God to support the ministry of Fusion Church, you can do that in a number of ways. Number one, pray for us, pray with us. God is doing some great things here at Fusion Church, and that is probably the best way for you to be part of it. The second way is if you live locally, please come out and visit us. Come, uh, come and enjoy service with us. And if you feel led to, you can even join our team and become a teammate. And the third way is if you feel led by God to give to the ministry of Fusion Church, you can do so by going to our website, www.fusionchurchny.com, and hit the giving tab. With that being said, guys, God bless you. Hope you enjoy the next message.